first of all, I would like to thank all the colleagues um, who gave us the opportunity to share our modest, modest experience. Today, I would like to stress my attention, as uh, Alexei already mentioned, on the treatment with, uh, um, with the tocilizumab. It's the uh, one that is now available in our clinic. Um, I will briefly go through the protocol um, that was originally approved uh, um, in Moscow. However, in our practice, we come to several conclusions that we would like to discuss with you today. Um, on the admission, we uh, did classical investigating and we do uh, classical investigating procedures with clinical assessment and with implementation of the validated scale, which is recommended for COVID patients. It's new. Uh, we discussed um, this scale previously in our previous meetings. So that we just adapted uh, the Russian, Russian version so that all the patients on the day of admission undergo CT scanning. Uh, which is considered the global standard that is followed by the lab tests and analysis of comorbidities and specific uh, PCR testing. Uh, it is um, done on the admission. Cool. We do use the following scale uh, where we have four grades of lung tissue involvement and the majority of guidelines is it is supposed to use the scale of three grades, but according to our clinical experience, we prefer going into more details. Therefore, we have four grades that we can see in the um, CT scans. After all the um, current data is analyzed in the frame of risk factors, we can influence our decision. Uh, so these factors can influence our decision on the um, time point of administering the treatment uh, or choosing the scheme of treatment. And uh, the most um, attention, of course, um, uh, is paid to patients with uh, um, uh, with these three groups of risk factors from group one to three. First is uh, comorbidities uh, and epidemiological uh, um, features, vital signs, and also labs. They are discussed in Massachusetts documents, so we just a little bit adapted them for for our use. So, of course, um, as it was mentioned, we start with CT1, uh, with, with CT scanning. Uh, so, um, and if the patient has two, uh, CT scan grade two uh, and uh, CT scan picture associated with the first grade. And if the patient has two uh, or more risk factors, we um, start with um, hydroxychlorine. Then we move to combination, we, we can move to combination with azithromycin, and if we need, uh, then we can add Caletra. But new data is coming so fast, so. Um, I think that we can discuss Calectra in the in the future discussion. Um, at every step, so we we are following the, this escalating algorithm or step up algorithm. At the every step, uh, when we start thinking of escalation of treatment, or when assessing the findings of the CC um, um, test grade two, we are discussing the possibility of initiating uh, the IL um, six treatment and we do prescribe the but um, in this scheme we use um, azithromycin is a immune modulating option not as a uh, anti um, uh, bacterial one currently uh, we have treated 77 patients uh, both in general ward and in ICU department uh, our main hypothesis um, of um, our brief and preliminary analysis is that we start the up treatment to the patients on artificial ventilation or in the middle of the cytokine storm and we are a bit late with this treatment uh, because at the very beginning uh, we um, have been trying to follow the um, recommendations that the up has to be um, considered on the time point or in the cases of really severe patients. But uh, our, um, to our experience, having treated 77 patients, maybe it's better, so it's for discussion, it's better to catch the start of the cytokine storm. And in this scenario, in this scenario we can succeed in more cases as um, maybe kind of additional hint can be uh, really high 
um, levels of CRP and decreasing of the presence of the lymphopenics. So the, um, we uh, revealed that the administration, of course, it's logical that the administration of um, at the very beginning of the worsening, the condition can reverse the symptoms faster and exclude all the not all, but some of the risk factors of bacterial complications and reduce the risk caused by the um, artificial ventilation. So let me um, just share some clinical cases that um, we have seen in our clinic. First is male patient, uh, 69 years with, the, uh, with no comorbidities. Uh, he was admitted on the seventh day of the disease. And I want to stress your attention that we always analyze which day um, from which day patients had the symptoms. I think it's really important so we can um, analyze the previous um, course and to uh, maybe to uh, take out the most dominant symptoms. The patient was on ma mask um, oxygenation and on intermittent regime. And in the frame of um, lab results, the most informative to our opinion uh, the, where the lymphocyte count and CRP, as I already mentioned. Uh, initial CT scan um, was grade 3, uh, and the um, uh, progression of the symptoms and progression of the disease um, brought us to the conclusion that we need to initiate the totalizumab. And so, you, as you can see on the CT scans, uh, on this, uh, and it was initiated on the first fourth day of hospitalization. As we can see that the CRP level goes down and the CT scan is much better and the um, lymphocytes are uh, coming back to um, um, higher numbers. Uh, the other one is not so optimistic. Unfortunately, the patient died and uh, it was um, also male patient, uh, 71 years old with the uh, uh, not many comorbidities, but still they existed. Uh, sixth day of um, the disease on admission, temperature um, higher than 38. Saturation was really low, and he was put on the uh, ad, uh, he was um, ad, uh, admitted to the uh, UCT um, intensive care unit um, intensive care unit. Uh, uh, treatment. So, and he was on artificial ventilation, and we initiated the tetrazolizumab on the first day. As you can see, that the huge lung involvement, but unfortunately, we didn't succeed. So, maybe it um, adv advocates our um, our way of thinking that we are a bit late when the patient is already really severe, and we can't see the uh, reverse of the of the picture. And um, I don't. I didn't want to um, close my short um, uh, talk today with the um, sad news. So this is also patient 61, uh, just discharged two days ago. Uh, well, um, a bit similar to the first one, uh, but CT scan was three and it was getting worse. So we came to the decision by commission decision making that. We uh, maybe we need to initiate the totalism up, and as you can see, the CT scan picture um, was pretty good uh, on the uh, on the point of when he was discharged. Uh, that's the. Um, I will be very curious and thankful for the discussion um, of our clinical cases, and I will be really happy to answer your questions or to dive more in the details of these clinical cases. Thank you very much for your attention. I would like to present some slides uh, about IL-1 uh, beta, which can take part in the cytokine storm syndromes. As you know, during influenza, uh, IL-1 beta is uh, associated with cytokine storm leading to severe disease and uh, mortality. Also, this cytokine uh, is a mediator of um, lung inflammation, fever, and uh, lung fibrosis. So here you can see 
potential indications for uh, interleukin-1 blockers. And my question is, what do you think about such kind of drug as uh, interleukin-1 blocker? Is it possible to use it among patients with COVID-19 in a severe situation? And the next slide, please. Here you can see all these uh, clinical trials which can use different kind of biological drugs. I would like to ask you opinion about these drugs. Thank you. Maybe, uh, Professor, Margolis? Well, Professor Margolis, could you give us some comments about these drugs in COVID-19? Я думаю, что лучше это сделать better. Майкл Ледерман does it because I can comment in the uh, context of the general cytokine release, but uh, specifics about this use for the medical uh, purpose in patients, I think Michael Lederman is better comments first. Professor Lederman, could you comment? See it for the first time up here. I see a list of uh, of uh, of uh, of inhibitors, all of which are anakinra and is a good IL-1 inhibitor. There's also <laughs> canakinumab, which has a longer half-life. Um, so both of those are uh, monoclonals that block, uh, actually IL- yeah, you have, yeah, and siltuximab is an IL-6 blocker, tocilizumab is the IL-6 receptor blocker, you have sarilumab down there is, uh, is, uh, is a receptor blocker as well, um, and uh, Kevzara, I guess, uh, uh, I'm told, is, is sarilumab. Um, Roac Temra, I don't know anything about that. I don't know what, what, what Roac Temra does. Oh, Actemra. Actemra is uh, tocilizumab. That's the Roche product. That's the Roche yes, product. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, Jorgen. I, 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 I no. But I, but I, th I think if I can just add that, I, I, because I think Mike already sort of alluded to this earlier in, in the presentation that when you're thinking of cytoscorm treatment, you can obviously start interacting at different levels of the cyto kind of pathway and all of these drugs I think potentially would be feasible to a certain degree and if you don't want to do a control arm in your study then actually maybe use one of those compounds to compare that with uh, tozolizumab may, may be an option and, and, um, uh, and so I think all of these are sort of promising with regard to the cytokine storm monitoring. Actually Jürgen's idea is a great idea because we don't know where, where, what the driver and, and what the, the regulators are. And if you're persuaded that tocilizumab is beneficial, comparing tocilizumab to another strategy, which could be IL-1 inhibition upstream or downstream uh, a JAK inhibition, I think that those are, are, are actually pretty nice designs. And in those designs, everybody gets something, and at least you'll know which of the two strategies you're comparing is, is valuable. I, Jorgen, I really like that strategy a lot. I think my, my idea here is, is, is that if you give tozolizumab sort of as the gold standard in the sense of that you have already case reports which show improvement, you have own case reports which show improvement, and it's ethical, difficult to have a control group, but you really don't know whether this is the best interaction point in the immune system, then there's a good justification because at least you offer another immune-based therapy which is sort of related and you would at least expect some kind of anti-inflammatory property with, with, with some of these agents. So I think it, it's, it, it gives you sort of a little bit of extra. And then on top of the fact that there are several running, or quite a few with the tozolizumab, then you're also adding something new to the field.